Thank you, Radhika, Jesus, Alan, and the others who have made this these two webinars possible. And for this invitation to talk about the, the upcoming elections, uh, and to counter the distortions and the, the half-truths of the mainstream media. Actually, the, the term half-truth itself is misleading in, in that uh, many times half-truth refers to 10% truth and 90% false. And I think that's what's happened in the case of Venezuela with regard to the corporate media reporting on, on, on these upcoming elections. I, I, I would like to look at the wider implications of um, July 28th, um, uh, what it means not only for Venezuela, but also the region and, and, and the world, and two issues in particular. Uh, and, and that is the rise of the far right and the issue of imperialism, US imperialism in particular. The issue of the rise of the far right and what uh, many call fascism or neo-fascism uh, is the central focus of discussion about elections here, here in the United States. Um, and the case of recent, ele recent elections in France and Holland, Germany, throughout Europe in general. Um, th these two contexts, the context of the rise of the far left, uh, the far right, excuse me, and the rise of imperialism, the, the role of US imperialism, um, is also the source of much debate on the left. Uh, for instance, some on the left argue that Trump is not a fascist because fascism only emerges in reaction to a strong left, which in the case of the United States isn't the case, unfortunately. Um, and there are people on the left, specifically theor uh, theoretical uh, analysts on the left who deny that imperialism should be the central focus of any analysis of what's happening in the world. Um, and they reject the idea of prioritizing the struggle against US imperialism. In the case of Venezuela, both factors are at play uh, and have to be emphasized in any discussion. That is the issue of the rise of the far left, for the far right, and the issue of US imperialism. And needless to say, the mainstream media doesn't even remotely discuss uh, either one of these two issues. But one thing is for the corporate media to skirt the issue of the far right uh, and the issue of US imperialism. Another is for sectors on the, on the left uh, to do that, which I believe in the case, is the case um, of those people on the left who fail to make any distinction at all uh, between Maduro and the, and the right wing opposition, fail to bring in the issue of, of US imperialism into the picture. This is the case, in my opinion, with the Partido Comunista de Venezuela, the P PCV. Let's take a look at both of these issues with regard to Venezuela. Maria Corina Michal represents not just the right, but the far right, uh, as it has emerged throughout the world. One of the characteristics of the far right is its expression of hatred for the left. That is to say that, um, well, the more moderate right, the center, as well as centrists, don't reject the, 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 the uh, the left in no uncertain term. The, uh, other sectors are not friends of the left, but it's the far right that preaches hatred for the left. It's the far right that associates the left with drug trafficking, uh, terrorism, um, and that's the case of Maria Corina Machado. That's what she has done over a period of, of, uh, of many, many years, specifically in reference to the Maduro government time and time again. Um, but also in reference to the Foro de, pa de Sao Paulo, which takes in leftist movements throughout Latin America. Um, another expression of hatred for the, for the Chavistas is her brandishing of the slogan, no to impunity. And on that basis, she talks about wanting to see President Maduro behind bars. The other sectors of the opposition, which I call the center right, uh, Manuel Rosales, who was the candidate um, for the opposition before he dropped out, and Capriles, Enrique Capriles as well, and even Henry Ramos of Acción Democrática. These people previously adhered to similar positions, but those people, after so many fiascos on the part of the opposition, 
they they modified their position after the opposition lost control of the National Assembly in the year 2020. So the Rosaleses and the Capriles and others began to oppose the U.S. imposed sanctions. Um, Machado did it. She didn't change her position after 2020. Rosales and Capriles began to call for a negotiated solution with the Chavistas, which implied a degree of toleration. Machado didn't do that. Another characteristic of the far right is its support for shock treatment style neoliberalism and mass privatization. That's exactly what Machado's position is. Uh, she sees mass privatization as the key to economic recovery. Not that the center right doesn't support neoliberalism, they do. But the position on neoliberalism is somewhat ambiguous. They refrain from taking a firm position. For instance, the candidacy of Rosales um, was supported by Fuerza Vecinal, which explicitly opposed the privatization of the oil industry, which Machado supports. Um, and Capriles has stated that oil belongs to the Venezuelan people, whatever that means. Um, but that statement by, by Capriles earned him the criticism of Machado supporters. A third characteristic of the far right is its support for uh, uh, and participation, participation in internationalism, which is currently being uh, constructed. Bonds are being created between far right movements and plans are being made to create a new international of the far right. Uh, Marine Le Pen's activism in Europe, she recently met with uh, Arben of, of, of Hungary. The Spanish party Vox, their recent summit in which Javier uh, Malay was the star, as was uh, Le Pen. Uh, and Steve Bannon's travels throughout the world in favor of uh, the European far right uh, and in favor of Bolsonaro of Brazil. All these are, are tendencies. And Maria Corina Machado is well placed in this network with ties with Netanyahu of Israel, uh, Santiago Abascal of the, the Vox party in Spain. Uh, her fervent support for Malay in the elections of Argentina and her condemnation of the Peronistas. Uh, all that fits the pattern of this internationalism of the far right. So that, that's the first dimension um, that I believe is at stake in the upcoming elections, which the media isn't touching with a 10 foot pole. The second topic, uh, which is central to understanding what is happening um, on July 28th, uh, and which the media true to form has ignored is the issue of imperialism. Unfortunately, sectors of the left also play down the topic. Francisco Palmieri, who's the de facto U.S. ambassador to Venezuela stationed in, in Bogota, has declared that the U.S. supports Machado on the basis of the fact that she won the opposition's primaries held in October. But there were other options for Washington. Rosales, for instance, didn't participate in those primaries. Um, so why did the United States, why did this the State Department cast him aside. Furthermore, once it was clear that the Venezuelan state would not allow Machado to run under any circumstances, the U.S. backed Machado, Machado's right to choose who that candidate was going to be. That is to say that Washington is not only supporting the opposition per se, it's backing the far right within the Venezuelan opposition, as it did previously with Leopoldo Lopez, beginning with the Guarimba uh, that Diego made reference to uh, the, the first quoting, but in 2014. Uh, and as the State Department did in the case of Guaido, uh, those two uh, leaders, Leopoldo Lopez and Guaido, belonged to the far right party, Voluntad Popular, and that party supported Machado's candidacy in the primaries that were held in October of last year. July 28th has to be seen has to be seen in the context of a candidate that is Maduro, who has resisted the actions of U.S. interventionism, who's pronounced, who, which, the, the most pronounced expression of U.S. interventionism is the system of sanctions, but it includes 
many, many other things as well, which the webinar last week and the other speakers today will enter into detail on. In contrast, Machado makes no effort to, to hide her pro-U.S. sympathies, which she states explicitly. There is no way to deny the fact that these elections pit an anti-imperialist candidate against a pro-imperialist one. Yet sectors on the left, in effect, deny that this is the central issue of the elections. The PCV, which I mentioned before, the Communist Party of Venezuela, places Maduro in the same category as the opposition on the basis of his alleged neoliberal economic policies, which I will not go into. There's no time for it, unless during the Q&A uh, session there's interest uh, uh, for me to do that. Uh, but there's a contradiction here with regard to the Communist Party. If you read the PCV statements justifying their support for Enrique Marquez, it has nothing to do with economic policy because Marquez himself cannot be described as anti-neoliberal. Over the last two decade, uh, decades, Mar Marquez is not particularly well known in Venezuela, but Marquez uh, has been closely associated with Manuel Rosales and his Un Nuevo Tiempo Party. This is a tendency in Venezuelan politics similar to social democrats throughout the world. Uh, elsewhere, they maintained, in some cases, fairly progressive economic policies up until the 80s and 90s, when they tended to support a moderate uh, version of neoliberalism. Not the radical neoliberalism of Machado, but nevertheless, uh, neoliberalism, which one might describe as selective privatization, which was the case of Rosales when he was the mayor of, of Maracaibo. So basically the PCV is raising the, raising the banner of democracy and forgetting about anti-imperialism, at least when it comes to its analysis of the Maduro government. The, the PCV may call itself anti-imperialist, and in fact it is, but nowhere do they deal with the relationship between imperialism and the Maduro, Maduro government. If they did, they wouldn't be able to voice their all-out condemnation of the Maduro government. So just to wind up, I guess I've, I'm, you know, uh, uh, I have just a minute or two left. So I've just summarized by saying that sectors of the left accuse Maduro and those who support him of adhering to what is often pejoratively referred to as campism. Campism goes back to the first Cold War when the left, the leftists allegedly had to choose between the Soviet Union, which adhered to socialism but was anti-democratic, and the United States, which adhered to democracy but was pro-capitalist. The Green Party, their presidential candidate in 2020, Howard Hawkins, Howie Hawkins, used the term campism and in doing so condemned the Maduro government. Fortunately, the current Green Party candidate, Jill Stein, takes an entirely different position. But the problem with campism um, is that it frames the issue um, that ignores several key uh, aspects. One is that the United States is, 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 might be democratic, uh, but there's no question that it, uh, for, that it provides support for dictatorships throughout the world. It did during Cold War I, and it's doing that today. I won't go into details on that. Uh, but the second point is that, and, and I'll, I'll end with this statement, that there is a natural convergence between the position of the Chavez and Maduro government and multipolarity and Russia and China, whose foreign policy discourse and their actions specifically with regard to Venezuela and Latin America emphasizes the defense of national sovereignty. Um, again, I don't have time to go into the details, but the lines are clearly drawn with regard to international relations. The candidate of the far right is unabashedly in the US camp with his principle of R2P, responsible to responsibility to protect, which is a cover for interventionism. On the other side, you have a government which has received support from Russia and China but one based on the principle of defense of national sovereignty. That doesn't mean that Venezuela is in the camp of those nations, but rather that there is a convergence with regard to the basic principle of national sovereignty. And this manifests itself in both political and economic spheres. The latter being the importance that the Maduro government is giving Venezuela uh, interest in becoming a member of BRICS, 
an organization which China and Russia are founding members of. Okay, my time is up. Thank you. I'm Michael Hudson. I'm appearing here for the International Manifesto Group. If you like this video and want to like it, please subscribe. For more information, go to the address on the screen.